Hello and welcome back to my channel. Jacob Payton here and I'm going to be talking about Carnosaur, if you couldn't tell from my dinosaur themed shirt, which of course is Jurassic Park and has nothing to do with Carnosaur. And I also haven't read Jurassic Park, sadly, but I have seen all the movies. So yeah, Carnosaur is another book that I saw the movie before I read and I definitely probably misremembered or that or the movie was just wildly different than the book. For instance, the book takes place in England and I do not remember that being the case in the movie. I do think the main character in the movie was a reporter and that might be the only similarity besides the dinosaur that they have in common. Um, so let's dive into this. Driven back to extinction and back for revenge, the world's most devious predator is back and he's got company, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not going to try to pronounce all the other dinosaurs' names. All have been loose into the modern world by Jane Penward, the vengeance-hungry nymphomaniac wife of the man who cloned them. David Pascal is a small-time journalist who gets his chance making it big by cracking the dino story, but the key to the truth carries a high price. It's held by Jane. Before she's through with David, the carnage created by the dinosaurs will spread for miles and climax in an apocalyptic battle between the primal monsters and the technological forces that modern man can muster. I did not realize that they gave away most of the book on the back of the book. I read the book before reading that, but that is <laughs> kind of all of the twists and turns. Uh, there is a little more to that. Uh, but man, that was honestly most of that. Oh. Yeah, I kind of hate that. I, I have noticed that a lot of paperbacks from hell especially seem to really just give away a lot of um, the plot right on the back of the book, kind of in the same way that a lot of early Y18 horror books did, um, where the descriptions would either be wildly inaccurate or would be a summary of everything that happened in the book to the point that it gave up the whole book. Um, that being said, one thing that really stood out to me with this, uh, as someone that liked the movie when I was younger, it, anything that had dinosaurs in it, I would watch it, especially if the dinosaurs were eating people. I was and still am a big creature feature fan. Um, don't get me wrong, I like slashers and stuff too, but I like the idea of being able to kind of have to outrun and outsmart a monster-like creature. It just, it's a different type of horror and also one that is less scary in my mind because Dinosaurs aren't opening doors or breaking through things. A lot of them aren't climbing, right? Like you can climb on stuff to get away from the shark. Obviously there's other things that happen um, if we're talking about sharks or other creature feature stuff. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. I like creature features, but one thing I did not remember, or at least maybe it's not in the movie. It's been a very long time since I've seen the Carnosaur movie. And as far as I know, it's not actually streaming anywhere. Um, I thought about buying it to rewatch it, but the DVDs on Amazon were stupid expensive. Um, I ended up finding a copy of this book in a clearance bin before um, Valencourt actually re-released it. And I will link that below because I think this is one of the few times where I've... Well, no. Yeah, no. I, maybe it is becoming more common, but horror is seeing a boom right now so we are getting a lot of re-release editions and luckily for us as a fan of classic horror books companies like Valencourt are putting out brand new editions I don't understand why Carnosaur wasn't included in their paperbacks from Hellline um, I I don't know what uh, that being said a lot of horror books from that era aren't included in the paperbacks from Hellline that they put out so I don't know what the um, kind of what their definition of for that. That is maybe something I would need to look into at some point. And I'm sorry, I got off another tangent. We were talking about dinosaurs killing people in England and the savvy reporter, David Pascal. So like I was saying, one thing I did not realize before I read this book and something that I definitely don't remember from the movie is while dinosaurs are running around killing people, everyone in this book is just thinking about sex. Like the whole nymphomaniac thing was in the description. And I guess I glossed over that because I, I would have known from reading that back in the book description that that had a big thing, you know, that was a big plot point. Um, 
David is a struggling, well not struggling, he is a very bored reporter in a small town in England where nothing really happens. He was having an, I guess not a fair, he was dating a girl named Jenny that he works with and then she breaks up with him or he breaks up with her because he's gonna move on to bigger and better things and then doesn't move on to bigger and better things. Um, and now has to see her every day. She starts dating someone else. He walks in on them on the office having sex for some reason because that's where apparently people have sex now. It's just in the office. It was a different time. And there are dinosaurs running around killing people all around this town, which I think is the bigger issue. Um, and you would think that too. But what does David do? He realizes the only way to figure out who's really behind the dinosaur menace is to start sleeping with the wife of the richest guy in town who he's pretty sure is behind the dinosaur menace because after everyone dies this guy just kind of shoots tigers because he has mercenaries and no one seems upset that this rich guy in a small town in England has a whole group of armed mercenaries that keep showing up at the scene of all these killings to shoot tigers um there's a lot there. Uh, but if you are like me and you read a lot of paperbacks from Hellbook books, you know that they are like wonderful, wonderful B-movies in that the main things usually make sense. Everything else doesn't have to. Um, and that, right, like you're not really meant to pick apart everything. Uh, and that's kind of the fun, right? You shouldn't think about why this rich guy has mercenaries or why no one's paying attention to the fact that he may or may not be cloning dinosaurs or why everyone keeps sleeping with his wife and why like everyone's like eh, I don't know that's the thing that's happening or why people in this book just like to constantly sleep together in very public places where everyone will walk in on them and then be like I don't know it's weird it's very weird especially because everyone has houses in this book um or apartments and they're all listed as spacious and as someone that doesn't have a house and rents apartments they're usually not spacious and they're expensive um that's my only real gripe it's just very weird on the fact that everyone keeps walking on everyone having sex and also the fact that no one seems concerned that everyone is dying from dinosaur attacks and even when they think it is just a um tiger attack they're also not that concerned because of course the rich guy has a private zoo and no one seems super upset by the fact that his tigers are getting out and mauling people. Um, especially in a lot of instances like killing entire families. So when the T-Rex does get out, that is call for a much larger concern. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to spoil the ending of this book because I do think it's very interesting. Um, that being said, there are some weird things that happen in this book, especially to the character of Ginny, uh, that I thought was kind of odd. Um, she, it does seem like the entire book is just set to punish her from moving on from David or trying to move on from David, especially like some of the stuff that happens to her at the end. Um, it was very weird. Um, it was also, I don't know. It was, like I said, this book for a book that I thought was going to be solely about people running for their lives from cloned dinosaurs in a small town or in a city. It was, it had a lot more to do with people's interpersonal relationships and who was sleeping with whom than I think I was open to giving it credit for going in um because what i remember from the carnosaur movies is and i don't even know if this is the first movie i remember it was like they're in some sort of facility and it's like a team of mercenaries and they are basically like shooting their way out fighting like all these dinosaurs that have like run through the facility um that may be in the second one maybe i don't remember the first movie at all it has been a very long time. I remember watching them on the Sci-Fi Channel, which is how long ago that is, because I don't even know if the Sci-Fi Channel shows movies like that anymore. Um, yeah, I, as someone that hasn't read Jurassic Park, I don't know if its claim to the being in the tradition of Jurassic Park is fair or not. Um, it is much shorter than the Michael Crichton book, I will say that. Um, and with all my gripes aside, it was still a lot of fun. Um, 
I mean, it was definitely a lot going on and a lot of things that didn't make sense. Um, I will say that as a main character goes, I did enjoy David a lot just because he's not like a very heroic main character, which I think makes it a lot of fun, right? I think in a lot of these paperbacks from Hell Books, we're kind of given these characters that are usually a little morally gray, but they all end up being kind of being described as like really strong strapping guys that can take on anybody. So when the scary stuff starts happening, they become the hero. Whereas in this, David's very much like, yo, that's a dinosaur, I'm out. Which I can appreciate as someone that's never had to fight a dinosaur. I think I too would try to escape more than um, save the entire town. But that being said, he does do some heroics. Some good things do happen. Um, he does try to help people when he can but also isn't afraid to just look out for numero uno when he has to, which like I said, I really appreciate and I think made him feel like a very real character. Um, besides some of the interpersonal weirdness, I will say that I think all the characters were really well written in this. Um, and you do kind of get a sense that there is a lot of stuff going on. And I think it would have played out maybe better if it was a longer book. But because we're given the fact that the dinosaurs are attacking right in the beginning or that people are having interactions, deadly interactions with dinosaurs right from the start, right? Like those interpersonal, like his relationship with Jenny and his like uh, sexual adventures with Jane later, you just don't really care about because like there's dinosaurs eating people. And I can't like harp on that enough. Once you give me dinosaurs, it's like, it's like an aquatic horror book, right? Like once you give me the shark and the shark has attacked someone, that's all I care about. Um, and that might just be me as, you know, that might be my own thing, but a lot of times, like, and I find this in creature feature movies too, once, I'm, once I have seen the creature, once it's no longer just a mysterious death reported here or a mysterious attack here, once I have visual confirmation of the creature, I only care about the creature because that's usually this time in a movie when the suspense has been ratcheted up, right? That's usually the time where the main core group of characters has now interacted with the creature and are running for their lives. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed this book. Uh, it was definitely not how I remember the movies, so I don't know how. I, I feel like I need to rewatch the first movie now to see how um, faithful the movie adaptation is. Um, yeah, other than some of the, like I said, like the weirdness and the fact that like the book really harps on who's sleeping with who throughout, this was really fun for a dinosaur book set in England. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, uh, you know, and it wasn't something that I had. I had nostalgia for the movie. I didn't really have a lot of nostalgia for the book because I didn't know it was based on a book until later in life. Um, you know, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought that the last, you know, their interaction, the the showdown with the T-Rex was enjoyable. I do think that the character of Ginny got overly punished um, just for some of the stuff that she did in the book that I thought, you know, probably isn't gonna age well with a lot of modern readers um, because David did all those things too. Uh, but, you know, this is also a book of its time. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it. I liked the dinosaurs dying. I thought that was neat. I also liked how dangerous the dinosaurs were. Like, this isn't a book that had to, ex they didn't take time to explain why dinosaurs are dangerous, right? As soon as the dinosaurs make entrances in any of the chapters, it is clear they are an apex predator and that flimsy wooden doors and stuff aren't gonna stop them if they wanna get to you and I enjoyed that a immensely. Um, I do wish we had spent more time with the actual dinosaurs. What we get a lot of is essentially random dinosaur attacks and then the final um, showdown with David and some of the other dinosaurs. Um, I don't know, I would have liked, I think, you know, since David is really the main character in this, I would have loved to have seen more of him interacting with them and maybe him running from them. 
Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. I could definitely see this as like a longer book. Um, I could also, you know, obviously I've seen it as a movie. I would love to rewatch those. I hope maybe because Valancourt's put it back out and maybe it sells really well. I don't really know who owns the rights, but I'm hoping that someone puts it on a streaming service somewhere. If not to stream for free, then at least to rent because... I, I, I don't know. I would love to see it again, and I feel like it's weird to have films as a studio that you just don't let people see anymore. But that's neither here nor there, and has nothing to do with books, sadly. Um, I enjoyed this. If you're looking for a good dinosaur uh, creature feature, I would not hesitate to recommend this. Also, if you're just looking for a new paperback from Hell, or paperback from Hell era creature feature that you want to put on your shelf, I would also not hesitate to recommend this. Like I said, Valancourt just put out a new edition with a gorgeous cover. Um, this cover's all right. I mean, the T-Rex the looks pretty hokey. This is clearly like, probably not the original cover and was the cover released after the um, after the movie came out because it even has like the now ma uh, major motion picture thing on there. Um, I don't know if they wrote any sequels. I know the movie had sequels. I don't know if the book does. But anyway, I enjoyed this. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it. If you read it, you liked it, you hated it. If maybe you're like me and you thought a lot of all the like the relationship stuff was really weird in light of the fact that like dinosaurs are hunting the town, uh, you know, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your feelings on that. Also, if you know of any other um, good books from this era that feature dinosaur killings, I would definitely be interested in reading those. I know Severed Press more modern press puts out a lot of dinosaur books that I have read and enjoyed. Um, I like dinosaur creature features for the same reason that I like shark creature feature books, right? You don't have to explain to me why they're scary. Uh, sharks are scary because I'm afraid of the ocean and dinosaurs are scary because they're dinosaurs. Um, but yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.